As researchers, the research process is going to be so fundamental to what you're doing in your program of study. So knowing what the library has to offer for research assistance and your ability to effectively navigate and apply information and information tools is going to be crucial. Both of those components are going to be crucial pieces of knowledge for you to have to do research and your studies effectively. The library offers the following research services. We have a 24-7 online chat available through our website and 24-7 text messaging. Those are staffed by degree librarians and so those are available whenever you should need them and they are equipped to help you and if there's something that they can't help you with then they will refer you to someone here at the library who will be able to assist you further. We also have online cat contact forms for example the Ask a Librarian on the Discovery Search and we also have email library at piedmontu.edu phone screen sharing so if you're having an issue on your computer and wish us to assist you then we can take control of your mouse see your screen and assist you right there where you can uh, see what we're doing see what we can see what you're seeing and assist you uh, directly on your device we can also do scheduled intensive help so that if there is something that you need some intensive time on it's more than just a quick phone call or a quick email we'll be glad to schedule that with you and assist you uh, with more in-depth assistance uh, for your research being able to effectively navigate and apply information information tools is called information literacy this is something that librarians as information professionals we try to specialize in so that we can help researchers like you the six main information literacy concepts that we use are the following authority is constructed and contextual in other words what is authoritative in your research may be different than what would be authoritative in someone else's research information creation as a process creating information whether it's books or articles or something else is a process and understanding that process can help you to understand where where to look and how to look and how to understand what you find information has value it takes time and energy and money to have to not only create information but to also to access it and knowing knowing those values and knowing how to overcome those barriers is key as well also research as inquiry research is constantly asking questions both of yourself and you know, of the process and of what you find scholarship as conversation scholarship and is a conversation between people that that are writing this information or discussing this information one will say one thing and another responds to say you know I agree with that but I don't agree with this and here is my take on the subject it's a, it's a conversation between people and knowing that is helpful as you as you look at information and understand where you fit into that conversation searching as strategic exploration so similar to research and inquiry searching and research is strategic but it's also an exploration it's sort of that adventure of you know here's I'm gonna start out here but I may end up at this other spot or I think I need to do this and in order to do that effectively here are the strategies that I'm going to use in my searching we're going to use these concepts as the framework the motif for modeling how you can use these concepts to guide you in your in doing effective research for yourselves so let's pretend that we're all researching the topic of penguins so what I've done is I've pulled up the library's discovery search and I'm just going to search on penguins and we're going to use uh, the first concept searching as, ex as strategic exploration to kind of guide give us a framework to think through what to do in this research process so to be strategic you need to think about what is most likely to be helpful first so 
That's why we chose to search Discovery here. We have other databases, other searches to use, but for instance the ProQuest search. That search is great if you're looking for dissertations. And the trend search is great if you're looking for theological dissertations or if you're doing a galaxy search. So that's great if you're looking for theological journals. But here we're looking on for really none of those. We're just looking for general information or, or different kinds of information on penguins. And so the discovery search is the strategic place to do our searching. We can broaden our search by replacing penguins with birds. So right now we have way, way too many results to sift through and, you know, to go through one by one. But if we did want to broaden the search, occasionally you will want to do that in your searching, to broaden it, then an example of that would be changing from penguins to just birds. Broaden that search and we'll see that we have more results than before. So that's a way you can broaden your search. Another idea that you might have is to narrow your search. Remember, we're, these are strategies. Searching, narrowing your search. So we are searching penguins, but we might narrow it to emperor penguins. So give us a more specific topic. And the results have gone down tremendously. Search terms. Another way you can be strategic is by changing your search terms. So you could try out some different synonyms. So for instance, the technical name for the emperor penguin is, and I don't even want to try to say it, So if you could be more specific, and once again, you've, you've uh, limited the number of results, been more, more specific by using a synonym. Subjects. Subjects that are listed on the results. So these subjects separated by the, uh, by the semicolons are individual subjects that you could then do a search on instead of what you've got. So you could do a, a different search on, the, on this by itself or on animal breeding. Another way you can do a subject search and help you out to improve your searching, be strategic, is to use the filter by subject down here. And I like to click show more and then go through the listing and select which ones would be helpful uh, to specific to what I'm looking for. Another thing you can do is to uh, improve your search results is to uncheck, well I shouldn't say improve, maybe increase, uh, your search results is uncheck this. So right now it's only bringing in what's either full text or should be only full text or what's available in our full uh, physical collection. So if you want other things that you can't access directly but you could request them from us for instance, then that would be something to uncheck to give you a broader, maybe even better results, just that you might have to request uh, us to get them for you. Another thing you could do to narrow your results is use these other uh, options on the left sidebar. So if you only want it online full text, or if you want just academic journals, or just ebooks, or just books, which includes online books as well. It doesn't include what's in this ebook, so if you want things that are readable online, you want to select both of those. And you could also filter by publication, publisher, language, database, all, and so forth. All those are ways to, to more narrow and specify your search. Another thing you could do is use advanced search. So with advanced search, you have lots of different options. So you can select a field. So right now, what you're searching in the search bar is, is searching every option, every field that it could search, title, author, subject, so forth. So if you want it specifically to search title, that will narrow your search results, or just subject, narrow your search results, be more specific. Another thing you can do is use these, what are called Boolean operators, and, or, or not. So you might say you want um, this and king penguin, uh, for instance. So it'll give you results that have both of those. Uh, or you might use parenthesis, or uh, quotation marks. Quotation marks are excellent. Those search a phrase. So right now, it's searching for the word king and the word penguin. Not necessarily in that order. And so it could be something about kings who own penguins. Well, you're not looking for that. You're looking for specifically things that are about king penguin. And so it'll look for that phrase exactly. Uh, 
which is very helpful to, to limit and specify your search to exactly what you're looking for. Uh, asterisks are also really helpful. Asterisks uh, give you an option to, it'll search for everything that starts with what you put down. So, so with, uh, with this, for instance, if I wanted to do uh, the word king with an asterisk, it would search for king, kings, kingly, and kingliness, anything that started with the word king. So that can be very helpful as well to improve your searching. Uh, you can also uh, change what's down here by searching, you know, un not searching within the full text of the articles, only getting peer reviewed, uh, and so forth. What I want to show you is an example of, of how you can do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a search. So I'm searching for penguins. I'm doing research on penguins, and I want it in the title field. You know, I really, I really want that because that's that's the best. You know, this gives me exactly what I'm looking for is something about penguins. Then I'm going to do an and, and I'm going to do a quote to do emperor penguin because I really want it to be about emperor penguin. But I'm going to leave this, you know, it could be mentioned the title or the subjects or, or, or other places. And then I'm going to do a search, so I add this. So I, what I'm looking for is to find out and do research on the size, the length, the wingspan. And so I do wing because it'll find wing, wings, wingspan, you know, so forth. So I want things that have all those. I'm going to select, just leave that there because be any field. I don't really care if it's title or subject that, or even inside the article itself or the book itself that talks about that. And then I'm going to do an, a not search. And in this case I'm going to do not suit. So I want to find about wild, you know, wild ones. And I'm going to put that in the title because, you know, I, if it mentions a zoo inside the article, for instance, so, then that's okay. But I don't want it to be primarily about zooed penguins. And I'm going to click search. And now I've only got 392 results, so it's much, it's given me much more, much more likely to be what exactly I'm looking for. So those are all ways you can be strategic in your explanation. Another thing, to, as we talked about information literacy concepts, is authority is constructed and contextual. So start with the, for, for example, uh, start with the big picture if you need to. A great way to do that is to do a... Uh, to use a dictionary encyclopedia especially to give you a big picture idea of what you're doing to give you a sense of what's authoritative and what is important and what is significant in your searching in, in this topic so um, let me see if I can get this to reset here yeah here we go so often if you're doing a, a broad enough kind of search you will be given at the very beginning what's called a research starter and sometimes, you know, you can you could add it, uh, like this would be considered a good research, or broad picture kind of search, but or uh, resource. But in this case, it's given us a research starter. So if, if I didn't find a research starter for what my topic was, I could add the word like encyclopedia or dictionary, and it probably would, would find me what I'm looking for. So I'm going to give me a sense for exactly, kind of give me a, a big picture of what I'm doing for my research to understand what's authoritative and what to pursue and what to understand. I could read through this and find out about all these different things to help me kind of give me a, a big picture framework, general understanding of my topic. Another thing that, let me go back, another thing to understand what's authoritative is to is your source types. So, you know, in your study, books may be the great way to go. It may be perfectly authoritative. But in some studies, Books are not the best option. You want to do academic journals because they're they're very recent. You know they come out very quickly, and they're very you know very deep in depth uh, works. So you know changing your source types could be help could be something you might want to do to keep that in mind. Another thing is to do choose peer reviewed. So I'm going to click show more, and here's that peer reviewed option. Peer reviewed is specifically for academic journals. So if you've specified academic journals and the source types, then you might want to do peer reviewed. Because what peer reviewed is saying is that people, peers, colleagues of the author, have gone through and they've said, yes, this this article is is good. This article stands up to our our scrutiny and our uh, considerations, and so this is this is a worthy, authoritative, you know, piece of work. 
and so that's a great way to 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 know what you're getting is has been you know been checked and approved <coughs> but once again that's if you're doing academic journals another thing is to ask yourself is this author a recognized authority and you may not know if you're not very you know skilled in that in that subject area but asking yourself that you might be able to find out something about the author from the book itself by opening up the book and looking at what it says about the author and say you know maybe this book's about penguins but this person has no experience with penguins ever well then you know they're not going to be a very authoritative source so keeping that in mind another thing to ask for authoritative is does the author have you know authoritative you know given background and experience so not just schooling but maybe schooling and experience ask yourself is the journal if you're looking at academic journals is the journal a recognized authority or is it one that most people would would think oh, I don't know if you can trust that one so that's something to ask yourself is it uh, is it authoritative and is the source recent enough so something from 1840 probably isn't going to be real accurate nowadays in terms of what we think about penguins so you may want to change that to 2000 and now you'll be more more likely to have information that is up to date and accurate by the current scientific standards or whatever the standards are of your searching so in some disciplines some uh, subject areas timing you know the ancient ancient documents are great but in other studies you want really recent things Another thing to think about for informational or senior research is scholarship as conversation. So uh, think about is this a conversation between people. So this person wrote this maybe in perhaps in response to someone else's or to fill in a gap of the information that's out there. And one thing you can do is look at what they cite. So their references, who they talk about, is a great way to think about how you fit into that conversation and to build off of that. So scrolling typically it'll be at the bottom or the end of a chapter bottom so all these are who they have used and who they reference and so you might be like oh you know that's going to be a great one right here for me to look up and find and get that because they think it was great so using you know looking at the references of what you're looking at a uh, an example of how this is very helpful in like something like ProQuest is they have something called their uh, their references or documents tab. So you can click on references in this example here and see that all of their references in this section, some of them are even hyperlinked, and they tell you how often you know they decided by, which can give you a sense for how authoritative, once again, that is and how where you can fit into that conversation. Maybe you really want to get you know that one because it's so great. Another idea is these documents with shared references. So you're like, oh, this is a great work. I really found this helpful. Let me find another one that's, you know, it's got shared references. So it might be on a similar topic or at least help me to engage in that conversation between the scholars. So it helps me to see what other people are who have cited this one. Another thing to keep in mind with the scholarship as conversation idea is that there are what's called controlled vocabularies. In other words, every subject area every study has its own terminology its own lingo its own vocabulary so a sport you know basketball is going to have different terminology that people that you know that uh, play that sport are expected to know and understand and use whereas football they're gonna have different terminology and different uh, different vocabulary different things that you know everyone's kind of supposed to know what that means and so every subject area is like that and it's your job to do really good research you need to know what those what those are and maybe do some searching with those keywords or just to think and notice them and understand them so for instance if you're doing penguins you would want to know the names of the six genus and 19 species of penguins so that you could do more in-depth understand when you're reading oh this is that penguin that they're talking about another thing to keep in mind in information literacy is the research as inquiry and so you're ask, constantly asking yourself questions. So, is the argument in this work? So you read through this article. Is it convincing? Do they make the case, or is the evidence trustworthy? Have they just made up evidence? You know, all these are questions to you know asking researchers' inquiry. You know, asking, asking, asking. Information has value. So think of it in terms of, of several components. So the value of, of wisdom. So 
you don't want, you know, you may not know a lot about using this, this search or might not learn a lot about your topic, but the wisdom of asking other people. So whether it's the library ask, using our, refer, our research services, so that chat, that text, that email, that phone call, you know, meeting with us, you know, saving that, you know, using other people's wisdom. Maybe it's your professor. Maybe it's a colleague, someone that you know. So that's the, the value, you know, it has the wisdom they have has value to help you. Also, the idea of time, that information has value of time. You don't have time to read everything. You don't have time to read thousands of, or even hundreds probably, of articles and books. So reading the encyclopedia to give you a big picture to understand where you're, what you're researching. Reading the abstract. So most articles, we will see if this one has it, has what's called an abstract. Yes, so... Instead of reading the entire article or book, you can read what's called the abstract or sometimes called the uh, like description. And you can get a sense for, oh, yeah, this is going to be helpful to me. I'm going to read the whole thing. Or you might be like, oh, no, this isn't. I thought it was what I wanted, but it's not. So that saves you that, that time, that value. And the idea of using citations. So if you decide you want this one, you can use tools on the left-hand side here to save you time, including the cite option, and just copy and paste the citation, checking it, you know, just checking it to make sure it's correct, but, but mostly it will be. So that, that t saves in you time, saving you time. Preservation and storing, you know, is value, so you don't want to lose it. You've done this work to find it, you don't want to lose it. So using uh, the these tools on the side, like sharing it, finding the permalink to get back to it immediately and easily, to export it, to email it or save it, print it, and add to folder. This is what I want to mention. Adding a folder is great because you can add, you know, if you don't have time to read all these, but you think, oh, these might be helpful, you can add to a folder and come back later. The only problem is if you have not created a free account on the Discovery Service with EBSCO, and it's free, just create a, a new account very easily, it's free. And when you do that and sign in, then, when you add things to a folder, they will be there uh, whenever you come back. If you have not signed in and you add things to a folder and leave your sessions or you close this tab, this browser, they won't be there when you come back and you'll have lost all that. So save yourself some time and energy and you know that information has value to save yourself that by creating an account, signing in and adding things to a folder. Another thing to think about is that the information has value is in terms of access. You know, can you access this one? Yes, in this one you can. You've got the PDF full text, you've got the HTML full text, but some things you can't access that way. So if you uh, you don't see that, you see an option for like requesting uh, interlibrary loan. What that means is you you we don't have it available in full text to you or physical collection. So you fill out that form for interlibrary loan, and we find that article or book, whatever it is from another library if we can and get it to you. Another thing to keep about think about is that you've selected the online full text from physical collection. So if you want to see things that aren't available but that you request, you could request through in the library loan, then that's a great way to to do that. Another thing to think about is our shipping and scanning services. So in addition to interlibrary loan, we also have shipping and scanning. So if this is a, a physical book, so let's do a physical collection only and see what we've got. Probably don't have much on penguins, but we will see. Okay, so we do have uh, so well, this is a penguin dictionary. But let's say you, you know, you might request this to be scanned, uh, and or this one you might request to be scanned or or shipped or you know this one scanned or shipped, and so that's a, a way to for you to get access because that information in that book has value to you. Another thing to keep a, think in my, keep in mind is other services like WorldCat.org. WorldCat. Dot org is a great way it searches libraries around the world, hundreds, thousands of libraries around the world, and it'll tell you where this book you're looking for, this article you're looking for, might be located. And then you could drive there and get it, or, uh, or you know, request our library loan, and we could probably get it from one of those libraries. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is our reciprocal borrowing programs, where you can go to other libraries that have, have joined us in these borrowing programs and check out books from them as if you were a student there. So we might not have the book, but they do, and you can just walk in and say, hey, I'm a Piedmont student, or Piedmont you know, faculty staff person, and there you go. You can get, um, you can check out their books as well. Other uh, things to keep in mind are the each of your, each state in America uh, typically has a public library system that you can search online for resources. North Carolina is called NC Live, NC Live, and it's great. Uh, it has has just millions of resources, all available for free 
uh, online and in the public library's uh, physical locations as well. Another key thing to keep in mind is that you know information has value in the sense of money. You know, it'll save you time and energy, but also money to use the scanning, the shipping, and library loan services, and the full text and physical collections that we have, and these other resources. Save yourself that time and that money because information does have value. Now, occasionally you might be you might need to spend money to get that valuable information. Another thing to keep in mind in your research is that information creation as a process. So recognize that an author's position on something may change over time. So if you're looking up an author on a topic, you might find that, oh, well, he says this here, but he says the opposite here. Well, it may be that over the years he's changed his mind, he's come to new, a new conclusion. So understanding where, what you're reading and when, and thinking that, that process of time is helpful. Another way to think through this is that you have the disadvantages and advantages to various information uh, creation processes and the results. So books and articles and dissertations all have a different process that they go through to become that published work. And those, you, what you're looking for is going to be different. So if you're looking for in-depth, really in-depth, but not too much of a read, that's going to be a journal article uh, often. If you're looking for a more broad, you know, less in-depth typically uh, kind of work, then that's going to be a book. Uh, and if you're looking for something pretty specific, but really in-depth and really long, you're looking probably at a dissertation. You know, all those factors affect what you think about what's in those works, and also what they're trying to do. And so you don't go to one expecting something that, that they haven't, that process of information creation isn't a part of that process. So knowing what you, you know, case studies. You know, you don't go to case studies for the same things you might go to a book for. So knowing what you're looking for and understanding that process of how information is created can help you to better research and improve your studies. So all of those are ways in which you can use the information uh, creation process, information literacy, uh, information literacy concepts to help you with your research. And specifically, you've seen also how that applies to this user interface of discovery searching. We hope it's been helpful. Thank you. Bye.